I think I know you. I think I know you too. Gorky. Pixar Village. Dada. Hey, hey, stay there. I'm coming down. Okay. Our doors are only 150 kilometers away, right. but we had to travel 15,000 kilometers to meet each yes. other. Huh? Yes, absolutely. What an irony. We've spoken so many times over the phone, exchanged so many messages, and we finally meet in person. And uh, I can put a voice to that, uh, or the face to that voice. <laughs> the face to the voice. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Okay, doing? very well. Uh, yep, mele mein mila jaisa. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so we got to interview the CEO. No, yeah, he's the GM of the Electronic Imaging Division. What do we do, yeah? Alright. We've got three cameras. Three cameras. One tripod and one microphone. But what we need to decide first is who's going to be in front of the camera. I think it's got to be you, yeah. Yes, you've got the experience. You've figured out uh, people like this uh, before. Look at the way I'm dressed. You're the Superman, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so your jacket and t-shirt, I think, is more appropriate. So you've been in front of the camera. Okay, you're asking me to do Harakiri? Yeah. I'll manage all the three cameras. You help me set the frame. So, uh, I stay behind the camera. You do the questions and we figure something out. So you're sending me to a place which I am not comfortable with this and you're going to do something which you are not comfortable with. Well, anyway, at this point, I don't think there is an option. Right. Okay. Okay. That's right. Yep. I see. Hello, everyone. Today, we are uh, fortunate enough to have Toshu San with us who is the general manager of uh, Fujifilm's uh, optical... Let me read it out because it's pretty long. Uh, because <laughs> he, he's a man in charge of a lot of uh, responsibilities. Uh, optical device and electronic imaging products division. Correct. Thank you for talking to us, uh, Toshi-san. Yeah. Welcome to Yokohama and uh, thanks for the time uh, having the interview with me. Thank you, pleasure is ours. Awesome. We are from India, mm -hmm. and uh, you are, as a company, though you always existed in uh, uh, India, you became certainly very active recently. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start this conversation by the reason why you were taking it easy for some mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and suddenly you are become really active, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. very visible. Mm -hmm. So, if you would briefly tell us why that small delay mm -hmm. in entering mm -hmm. uh, you know, a net market like India mm -hmm. and what is in store for us in India. Sure. So uh, let me start uh, with uh, a little bit history of our uh, x series So we started the uh, first generation of X100 uh, yes. back in the 2011, which was uh, uh, eight years ago. So uh, that's uh, you know, uh, the beginning of the x series and now we rapidly grown our uh, product lineup. Then they know oh, the first generation of the X100, as a, we probably focus on the more oh, street type, street photography yes. uh, type of uh, photography. And uh, uh, the gradient, we are getting into more oh, versatile uh, style of photography, including the, our wedding, uh, more the movie, the functions. And uh, for example, the X-T3 is our, our latest uh, top end. Uh, mirrorless cameras can can cut uh, uh, 60p. So uh, and also you know, we have a uh, very beautiful uh, color science called uh, Eternal Mode for the movies. So we think you know uh, it's the right time uh, we we enter the Indian market because of uh, our maturity or uh, growing up uh, right now. Oh okay, uh, but at the, so that that leads me to the next question. Mm. I'm a photographer myself, mm. and we also have a YouTube channel. Yeah. So I, I have used a lot of cameras, you know, in, in, in my life as a, a career as a photographer. I've used lots of uh, cameras, you know, myself. Sure. Uh, when I look at uh, your product range in comparison to other brands' product range, mm -hmm. lots of other brands have a very gradual, you know, like, like a very well-defined uh, uh, product range. So you can enter right at the bottom if you like to mm -hmm. and slowly keep, you know, upgrading yourself. Though you have 
sufficient number of uh, models, but each one, I mean, I can't really put my hands on one and say, this is your entry camera and this is your you know, top end. In fact, I see all cameras have a special position of its own. Is that a conscious decision or if yes, why do you why did you take uh, a, an entirely different route, which mm. which is not probably done in the camera industry? Yeah, I think that it's very a good point. Uh, exactly as you mentioned, uh, traditionally uh, camera brands uh, create a, a, a so-called pyramid uh, type of the product lineup uh, based on the uh, numbers, you know, pixel, uh, sensor size, or the performance and uh, starting from the uh, lower price point to the higher price point. Our approach is a little different. Uh, the reason, because of, uh, we think uh, that you know, the center of photography is not uh, the camera or equipment. The center of photography is a photographer. And the photographers has a uh, um, lot of different type of uh, photography in church. Uh, for example, street, wedding, commercial, uh, more travel, documentary, and uh, that type of photography, the needs, the different the style of equipment. So uh, our approach is uh, we uh, always to think so what this camera can do, what type of uh, photographers. So uh, we started the rangefinder style with uh, X100, X Pro 1, and uh, moving into the more SLR style. And uh, within the SLR style, uh, you know, if you look at the uh, XH1, has got yes. the bigger grip yes. because uh, some photographers prefer the bigger grip, especially for the, uh, the, the big zoom lens, uh, the auto lens. So uh, the more we think about uh, uh, photographers, the more you know uh, different style of the cameras we have to create. It's not just you know the sensor or numbers or the performance. I think that the style of the photography, style of the equipment. Is more important. So that's why, you know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's hard to tell so which is our, our entry model, which mm -hmm. is our high end, because uh, the, the style of the camera, the style of the can take is a different. Mm -hmm. But uh, India is predominantly, I mean, the numbers will come from wedding photographers because India is predominant. You know, we have uh, one and a half billion people, and one has to get married at some point in time, and you know, there's so many marriages yeah, happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, wedding photography, I mean, if you need to grow numbers, mm -hmm. wedding photography is what you need to concentrate on. And I'm not suggesting anything, I mean, I'm just, you know, kind of telling you that probably that's the largest market mm -hmm. in India for not just Fuji, for every camera company. Mm -hmm. Now, the perception of Fuji, like you said in the beginning, is more. Fuji is more a street, mm -hmm. you know, candid uh, kind of camera. How are you planning to convince mm -hmm. a wedding photographer to say, hey, this probably is what you should be looking at as an option. Mm -hmm. And if you like it, of course, you know. So uh, what are the efforts, uh, efforts that are being done in that direction? Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's true that uh, we started uh, uh, more rangefinder style X100, X Pro 1. Uh, eight years ago, two years ago, uh, that more fit in the uh, street uh, photograph photographers. Uh, but if you look at the uh, current range, uh, things like the XT3, XH1, uh, they you know very decent uh, capability of the movie shooting and uh, the wedding photography is the movie is also important. They also uh, think you know the uh, wedding is. Very important, I know, uh, for the uh, Indian people. So uh, I think the Indian uh, wedding photography is a very important part of the you know, Indian market. So we are closely uh, looking at the uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, what what technology can make the wedding photographers the do the better? Uh, the one uh, probably you know one of the biggest opportunities is color science, uh, both for still and the uh, movies. For the still. Uh, our uh, color rendering is a uh, in terms of the, the skin tone. Sure. Uh, it's very good. Absolutely. And uh, for the movies, our uh, material mode is well received by the uh, uh, the videographers. Yeah. So for both still and the uh, movie, we are uh, we see a uh, big potential uh, for wedding photography in India. And uh, also, you know, uh, the lens lineup is also important. So because of you know uh, the 
uh, we know the, how the, uh, the tough conditions uh, wedding photographers in India have to take uh, overnight uh, the very dark condition. So all you know, photographers need you know, the, uh, as bright as possible uh, the lenses. Uh, but you know, uh, if we can end up the, you know, the very big, heavy glasses, yeah. it's a, becomes a very uh, heavy, uh, tough burden for the photographer. So how to create, you know, the bright enough and the, the small enough glasses is <coughs> also the, uh, uh, a challenge as well as a question. So we think, you know, our uh, equipment is ready to go within photography in India. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure you already know that the Indian wedding photographer is also a very price sensitive customer. Do you have any special plans for him? It, I, I, I'm just trying to speak for you guys, okay? Uh, so, because I got the man right in front of me. I don't, I don't want to leave this opportunity, you know, go. So I'm going to ask him, uh, do you have any special plans in terms of, you know, for foreign for market? Because like I said, it's, it's the India is a, it's a big country. Mm -hmm. Lots of wedding happens, you know, on an on a auspicious day. Lots of photographers now, it, it's, it's their profession, their mm -hmm. daily uh, bread, and they need to have good quality equipment in their hand. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, not all of them are rich, mm -hmm. and they cannot, though they want to afford, they, though they want to upgrade themselves to a better camera, mm -hmm. they don't have enough money uh, to, to, to be able to do that. Uh, do you have any special pricing strategy for uh, the Indian market? So uh, generally, uh, we're fully really aware uh, the you know, sensitivity of the pricing and the cost, and uh, all the wedding photographers need to uh, get the return from the uh, investment, of course. So uh, our plan is generally uh, thinking of or by focusing on the uh, APS-C format instead of the full frame. Mm -hmm. I think the overall the investment mm -hmm. in the cost. Uh, cash much, cash lower much lower uh, compared to our yeah, frame. Not just for the, the camera itself, yeah. but also the thinking about uh, uh, considering uh, the lens lineup. Sure. Uh, overall, the cost, I think, you know, or Apple to Apple comparison, I think uh, our system can be reduced maybe one third of the total cost. So that's the one uh, clear benefit of our system uh, by focusing on the APS-C. And, uh, uh, of, and uh, the other point is, you know, uh, the durability. I think, you know, uh, once the uh, Soon after uh, the photographers invested and the camera broken, mm -hmm. that is no point. Yeah. So I think you know, uh, that under the tough condition of the wedding photography in uh, India, I think that the durability is uh, also the, uh, a kind of the insurance Absolutely. for their uh, return investment. So we have uh, the products, the cameras, well designed for the fully uh, winter resistant, the okay. dust resistant. So I think that overall the cost uh, for the return investment. I think you know, uh, our system is probably uh, what we will see. Mm. I also see most of your lenses are still made with metal, mm -hmm. very unlike yes. uh, plastic, uh, you know, mm -hmm. body for many other. Uh, I'm not drawing a comparison here. I'm just stating what I saw, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, in your lens range, okay. and also many of the mirrorless camera brands. They don't have a huge lineup, mm -hmm. barring a few brands. Mm -hmm. You are you've entered with a whole lot of options in in wide angle zoom, standard zooms, mm -hmm. tele lenses, etc., mm -hmm. which, which I thought was really interesting. Thank you. But I think the APS-C also has some limitation with regard to the amount of pixels it can carry. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm referring to resolution. Maybe 26 megapixels is kind of, to my limited knowledge, it's kind of maxed out in terms of resolution. Do you have any plans in probably going to a, a full frame? I'm sure you must have answered this question, you know, a zillion times. But for the benefit of our viewers, let me ask you one more mm -hmm. time: mm -hmm. Any plans to enter the crowded uh, mm -hmm. full frame uh, market at all? Uh, we don't have a plan to go to the full frame. As you don't. You know, yeah, I, we don't have. You heard it. Yes. They, they don't. They want to be staying with the PSC. Yes. Okay, sir. And the uh, medium format. Of course, or yeah. GFX. Uh, the, in terms of technology-wise, uh, the uh, number of megapixels uh, at the moment uh, 26 is the maximum number of the APS-C. But uh, we will see uh, some opportunities. Oh, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think he's just spilled the beans, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I cannot say that any oh. concrete problem, but you know, uh, that the potential of the, you know, that the format mm -hmm. uh, can uh, go uh, a bit more higher. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, megapixel is not just you know uh, everything uh, of the image quality. I think you know we should look at uh, the other way, uh, well, for example, the dynamic range mm -hmm. or uh, sensitivities. So overall, the image quality. I think you know, in Megapix is only the one part of the uh, one kind of yes, yeah. image quality. Sure. <coughs> yeah, please. Yes, and also you know, uh, the uh, we need to look at uh, uh, the lenses, the glasses. So uh, full frame, the glass is becoming bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. heavier and heavier, mm -hmm. and uh, more and more expensive. Sure. So uh, if you compare the uh, uh, FHC XGs, the lens liner against as a uh, uh, full frame. Uh, the lenses, the size is small, yeah. and you know, it's it's bright, it yes, and uh, it's bright enough, and uh, the small light and the more affordable. I think that overall the uh, image quality will be determined not only by sensor size, but also by the glass, yeah. uh, not only by the megapixel, but also other sensitivity and the dynamic range and so on. Okay. But the GFX range that you just referred to. Okay, so let me tell you, I, I'm, I've been a commercial photographer for a very long time, and I've uh, used all formats, uh, and I've, the GFX, uh, the so-called medium format is, the GFX format, excuse me for the usage of the word, kind of middle of the road kind of solution. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's, it's, it's bigger than full frame, but it's not all the way to so-called medium format. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, I've used it. I like the uh, product. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, intention of, let's say, uh, you know, going towards the true medium format? Mm -hmm. uh, because you already have the lenses for it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the understanding of making medium format uh, mm -hmm. cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, so, is there any, you know, GFX seeing a larger sensor mm -hmm. and going through uh, medium format? Is there any plans like that? Uh, I think you know uh, our current GFX format, uh, 44 by 33. Uh, that sensor is, I think, you know, or more than enough mm. to deliver the best uh, image quality. Uh, of course, you know, or in the world there is an even bigger format, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, it's compared to you know our GFX the sensor against uh, even the bigger sensor. I think you know uh, the benefit to get in terms of the image quality is a very little. And you know, uh, the downside, of course, the size and the cost and uh, the, the lens, uh, the weight. So uh, we think you know, our current GFX is a you know, right edition we made, uh, which is a 70% larger than the full frame. I think that that's the, the large enough to capture the enough light to deliver the, uh, uh, the decent image quality, particularly here, oh. this is a uh, hundred megapixel, okay. right? So uh, this is a uh, it's not a, a mock-up. This is a working sample. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you look at the uh, the quality of this the hundred megapixel together with the, the power of you know, the original GF lens, the quality. I think that you will be amazed by the image quality. It's the same mount and same same lenses, so the photographer doesn't have to buy sure. anything. No, uh, and uh, the, the, this G lens originally designed to match uh, with uh, over 100 megapixel the quality, so you don't have to upgrade the lens. So you keep the same lens and then just you know, uh, upgrade the camera. Yeah. You have a 100 megapixel. Okay. Any any. Uh, so th you, this is already a working model, you said? Yes, it is working. Uh -huh. And when is it expected? Uh, uh, any, any dates uh, planned uh, at all? We haven't confirmed yet, uh, but you know, uh, certainly uh, within the uh, first half of this calendar year. Wow, uh, okay. You, you, yeah. So you heard it uh, in this channel. Uh, any, any modeling decided for it? Any? Uh, we haven't decided. Oh, okay. Yes, at oh. the moment, GFX 100. So a 100 megapixel medium format camera is going to be released in the first half of this year. 
You have some chest, yes. yes. Wonderful. Exactly. Ex expected. Wonderful. Okay. Fuji Filmus, uh, from the name itself, is there. I mean, you've been in, you've been in co conventional, you know, uh, photography, the chemistry-based photography. Yes, you yes. had films, and mm -hmm. you know, unlike many people did, you did not resist yourself from going digital. Mm -hmm. And uh, which, and I know hindsight, when you think about it, it was a very wise decision to, you know, mm -hmm. don't stay exclusively with film. Also, you know, we embraced technology and moved on. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I see a lot of photographers asking for film. Mm -hmm. And uh, film photography, uh, I hear, is growing at the rate of 10% if I don't know that. I mean, I just heard a figure like that, 10% is like a huge number worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have uh, any plans uh, about, I know that there are films available, mm -hmm. but especially for India. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have plans uh, to popularize uh, film photography as well? So, so uh, I'm not in charge of the, you know, the oh. film photography. Okay. Uh, so the different division handling the, the film and the conventional uh, the, the photographic materials. Uh, but you know, uh, when I joined the Fuji uh, back in 1991, so quite a long time ago, yeah. so my first job was in charge of the film, of course. Oh. And uh, you know, I have had lots of you know. <clears throat> Uh, experience and uh, kind of with them. Uh, yeah, I myself was a Fuji user. Yes, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, I, um, you know, talking to, uh, for example, the uh, DOP, uh, Director of Photography, for the, the, uh, the cinema field. Oh, yeah. Yes, many, many uh, DOPs, many cinemas uh, now came back to the, the film film oh, yes. shooting. So, all uh, the same things happening for the still photographies and uh, uh, as a company, uh, we still, you know, are producing a lot of uh, type of the films. Of course, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we have to uh, take the commercial decision, maybe uh, squeeze down the more popular lineup, or you know, the, uh, increasing the cost a little bit. But you know, uh, as a company, we fully committed to the, uh, the, the photography community, uh, sustainability, and the community. Mm -hmm. So, I think you know, uh, it's good to hear that uh, the film photography is, is a little comeback. That leads me to another question, which is related to more technology. You see cameras are becoming more and more intelligent. Every firmware upgrade mm -hmm. is making that camera that bit more intelligent. Yes. It's making decisions much better, in a much better way. And the current buzzword is AI, mm -hmm. you know, artificial intelligence. You, do you see cameras moving in that direction and becoming, you know, kind of, uh, you know, you tell the camera to do something and mm -hmm. kind of, that's, I mean, that's an exaggeration, I know, mm -hmm. but do you see Computational photography uh, becoming a part of, uh, let's say, uh, you know, more or less popular photography. Uh, I think that definitely yes. So, uh, computing or AI will become the uh, important part of three years. Yes. Mm, probably yes. Okay. Uh, Did you say three years? Uh, yeah, I can say the three-year time. Okay. Yes, uh, you will see uh, much more, you know, uh, intelligent uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, will be uh, loaded into the, the cameras. Okay. So oh, it is a kind of the more of deep learning and uh, more kind of you know, AI technologies. Okay. I think that it will become the more and more important part. Sure. So helping, it's not you know the managing or controlling, it is a helping uh, photographers uh, to take the better image quality uh, in the easiest, easier way. Oh yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, thank you very much. for talking to us. Thank you very much. So that's it from CP Plus in Japan. Thank you. The man himself, Toshi-san. So I'm here with uh, Sosan, who's the head of the Fujinon division, which basically means that he's in charge of all the lenses that come to you. So, welcome to our channel. Yeah, thank you, Ron. Thank you for having me here. We have, you know, um, a huge uh, market, uh, you know, in India, as yeah. you probably know. Huge. And yeah. um, Fujifilm is a relatively unknown kind of a uh, uh, factor at the moment. You, you mean uh, cinema industry? Yes. Yeah. And you know, uh, people have been using and they have been seeing your other products mm. in terms of X-series lenses. Yeah. And we have this... Uh, so when 
you talk about cinema lenses, could mm. you, uh, let's say the focal length, 1855, mm. when we compare it to the X series, mm. what would you be saying that is different in the cinema lenses mm. as compared when people see the two numbers, 1855, uh, okay. and they see the difference in size yeah. and price? Yeah. So could you explain in a little detail okay. as to what are the differences yeah. that one makes, uh, that what makes okay. a cinema lens? So hope I can make it short, right. but uh, actually, you know, I have two, uh, you know, big category. Right. One is a digital camera, right. so still photography. Right. The other one is uh, like a TV lens or a cinema lens. Right. Uh, this is a Fujinon product. Right. Uh, the biggest difference between the still photography lens and the cinema lens is the mechanics. Right. For example, you know, the still photography lens, there is two big, you know, the part. Right. One is doing, uh, you know, the zoom and the focus, both. So when you zoom in, zoom out, focus will be shifted. So okay. when you put the focus in, in your right. eye, right. zoom in, zoom out, focus will be shifted. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So this right. is what we call zoom shift. Zoom shift, okay. While, you know, cinema lens has a three part. Right. One part is doing focus only. Right. Second part is doing zoom only. Okay. So when you zoom in, zoom out, Right. You are this focus point will be staying. Same. So you can shoot perfectly for the you know cinematography, videography, right. my wedding also. Yeah, right. this is a big quest part. So okay. the Fuji, good point is we have a boss. Right. Yeah. Yes. So That's now you know I have a, a cinema lens on the right hand side. Right. And the X series on the left hand side. <laughs> right. And as you said. India is a very huge market. Right. So we want to you know tackle with from both sides. This okay. is my my our plan. So uh, you have the two. Uh, I mean, at least I know of the two lenses that are there: the 1855 mm -hmm. and the 50. Uh, 135. 5135. Yeah. So are you planning to come up with more uh, in terms of primes or other zooms as well? Uh, actually, you know, the my prime lens is very easy for us. Right. So how we can enter difficult India market? Right. We need to show some uniqueness. Right. So we believe, you know, the zoom lens is a uh, unique more difficult to develop right and uh, also where you know we can show our uniqueness right so we want to continue to do the zoom lens also one thing uh, you have to notice in this you know videography cinematography industry is that now you know, budget is going down right right, right. You start to be one million rupee, but now half a million. Right. Too. So you know you have to you you know you have to reduce the uh, time of uh, period of shooting. Right. Instead of three days, you have to finish two days. Absolutely. Yeah. So now you know zoom is more you know the, I mean uh, usable. Right. Because if you change the prime lens, right. Also you have to change the lighting, so many things. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, you know zoom, you just change the focal length. So you can continue to shooting. So now trend is shifting to uh, this. Right. So we want to you know the uh, assist right. or help in you know the zoom rate. This is our idea. Nice. So speaking of uniqueness, uh, suddenly large format has come in. So yeah. this is Fujinon yeah. planning anything in that? Uh, yeah. So now you know the our cinema lens. You can right. see below. This is uh, you know the super thirty five. Dedicated. Sorry? Super 35. Super okay, 35 yes. is similar yes. to APS, APS C yes. size for uh, stereo photography Standard camera. Standard size for yeah. movie making. So yeah. now, but uh, now, Bollywood or Tollywood or Kollywood right. uh, market is shifting uh, full frame. Right. Or even bigger, bigger, bigger yes. than full frame. Right. Which is uh, like a Vista Vision 46.3 millimeter right. The right. diagonal. So our plan is to develop new cinema lens right. which cover you know the, the full frame or even the vista vision so uh, i cannot say anything but please you know the wait and the expect okay, so, but they are yeah we can uh, announce something we can yeah and uh, more deliver more excitement to the uh, Indian customers, yeah. So, looking forward to those. Very soon, very soon, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for having board with us. Thank you for having yeah. us.
Uh, we managed to catch hold of another big wig from uh, the Fuji Film uh, Corporation. Uh, here is Jun San. He is uh, responsible personally for uh, the XH1, the XT3, and the XT100. A few more. Uh, yeah, I don't remember all the names, but a few uh, more numbers. XA5. XA5. Right. So. Uh, okay. So for us in India. The XT3 is actually a big game changer after the XH1. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, would you like to say a little more about uh, XT3 and the philosophy behind it? People already know it, but I'd like to hear it from you know from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah. yeah uh, for the XT3, uh, we have the, the concept. Of course, uh, we focus on the still image quality the, and the performance, but also uh, we. Uh, focusing uh, about the video the performance. Yeah. First, uh, first of all, we will achieve the uh, 4K 60, the progressive, and the uh, 42 uh, 10 minutes. So uh, we, the, our users, uh, evaluated the, our the kind of the film look, the, uh, the kind of film simulation. Okay. Uh, uh, but some uh, users said uh, we need more of the performance, video performance. So uh, finally, we will achieve uh, those, uh, this, this current. Yes. Okay. So I've been using the XT30, you know, which is like a younger brother of the XT3. Yes. Sure. Uh, but the XT30 seems to have certain features a little better than the XT3 in terms of yeah. firmware and, you know, they like follow filters, etc. Can we hope to see the XT30 kind of performance in terms of video? Uh, I'm talking specifically to face tracking and eye tracking right. in the XT3 because you know I've, I've had a few friends asking about the XT3's eye, eye tracking, and though it is available, probably not as effective uh, as it is in the XT uh, the, the XT30. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Continuously, uh, we uh, upgrade. We are upgrading about the Namia. Uh, we are uh, we keep on uh, developing. So uh, about the focus, the performance in the video mode. Of course, uh, we will upgrade uh, for the Namia. Maybe uh, next month. Next one. Right. Okay. So you heard it. Uh, the XT3 firmware upgrade is expected anytime soon, maybe sometime next yeah. month. You see. Yeah. Especially the pace and the uh, like performance. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'm sure today you have a busy day. Uh, you just started, so oh. uh, so I'll not hold you back. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking Thank to you. us. So, that's uh, Jun-san from uh, Fuji Films.